Halloween, that time of year when the weather starts to get colder, the days begin to get shorter, and reruns of Hocus Pocus play incessantly on TV. Three ancient hags versus the 20th century. How bad can it be? <laughs> Halloween is seen by many throughout the world as little more than another American holiday and commercial cultural export. But what if we told you that Halloween is far more than that and that it actually began not in America but nearly 2,000 years ago in Ireland? Well, it's time to explore Halloween's Irish origins. Halloween's earliest origins can be traced back to the ancient Gaelic harvest festival of Samhain. Samhain, meaning summer's end or end of summer, was celebrated all across Ireland as well as parts of Scotland and the Isle of Man, possibly as far back as 2,000 years ago. It was a pagan festival in nature that marked the ending of the warmer summer months and the beginning of the much colder and darker winter months. Understandably, this time of year was also more closely associated with death and it was for this reason that the Irish saw it as a transitionary time where the boundaries between life and death were at their most porous, allowing the spirits of the dead to cross over and return to the mortal realm. Whilst most of these spirits were seen as harmless however, many were said to be responsible for damages to crops and property. Samhain would be observed in Ireland almost unchanged until the 6th century, when the growing Christian faith in Ireland would slowly begin to influence the festival. For instance, the Christian feast days of All Saints' Day and All Souls' Day were both moved from the 13th of May to the 1st and 2nd of November. The new close proximity of these Christian feasts to Samhain then led to a gradual blending of the celebrations over time. All Saints' Day, which was also referred to as All Hallows' Day, then led Samhain to eventually become known in Ireland and Scotland as All Hallows' Eve, All Hallows' Evening, and finally, Halloween. So now that we've seen the origins of Halloween back in ancient Celtic Ireland, let's discuss how this ghastly holiday eventually spread to North America. Halloween was not widely celebrated in colonial America due to the northern colony's traditionally strict puritanical belief system. However, southern colonies, especially those with larger Catholic populations, did recognise All Hallows' Eve in their church calendar. This was then compounded by the arrival of over 2 million Irish men and women fleeing from the Great Famine between 1845 and 1849. In order to hold on to their cultural roots, the Irish would bring with them many of their own customs and traditions, including St. Patrick's Day and Halloween. Halloween was initially only celebrated mostly in these new Irish immigrant communities, but over time, Halloween would eventually spread out all across the country. As an economic, military, and most importantly, cultural superpower, the massive influence of the United States in the 20th century helped Halloween festivities to spread around the world, but also led it to become seen in many countries as nothing more than an invented American holiday and an unwanted cultural import. Sacred bonfires were lit throughout Ireland on hilltops during Samhain along with the practicing of ritualistic animal sacrifice to help ward away evil and malevolent spirits who may have crossed the thinning boundary between our world and the afterlife. The ash and smoke of these communal bonfires was also said to have had powerful purifying properties which would then be spread around communities and crops for further protection from evil spirits and bad luck. As part of the festival of Samhain, many different games were played on the night including bobbing for apples, which was also known in Ireland as snap apple. These games were not just played for prizes and fun, but were also used as part of important matchmaking ceremonies, which were common during Samhain. People in Gaelic Ireland would dress up in costumes made of animal skins and heads to disguise or guise themselves, imitating spirits in order to protect themselves from the souls of the dead or possibly to receive gifts on their behalf. On the night of Samhain, people would also go door to door singing for food for the festival or for fuel for the bonfires. This tradition was also possibly brought by Irish immigrants to the US and became Americanized into what we now call trick or treating. The practice of vegetable carving was widespread throughout Gaelic Ireland. The Irish would carve distorted and monstrous faces into turnips or potatoes in order to ward off evil spirits. It was also part of this common practice to then hollow out these vegetables and use them as ghoulish makeshift lanterns. 
So, when Irish immigrants came to America, they brought this and other spooky Halloween superstitions and traditions with them. Pumpkins were a plentiful fruit in the United States and were also larger and easier to carve, so naturally, they became the perfect produce to turn into jack-o'-lanterns. Now, about that name, jack-o'-lantern, well, that comes from the Irish legend of Stingy Jack. Our creepy tale begins centuries ago in Ireland with a blacksmith and drunkard known locally as Stingy Jack. Jack's widespread and well-known reputation for deception, manipulation and trickery earned him much disdain and contempt, but more dangerously, it would also earn him the attention of Satan himself. Late one night, as Jack was stumbling home drunk as usual, he came across a dark, imposing figure standing before him. Jack immediately realised this terrifying figure as Satan, who had now come to take his soul. Jack, knowing his time was at an end, made one final request of the devil. He begged to be allowed to drink ale one last time. The devil decided to honour this request, and in a nearby pub, Jack, being stingy as ever, drank as much ale as he could before he began to question Satan's power, daring him to transform into a silver coin, which he would then use to pay the bill. Satan agreed, but as he transformed, Jack then quickly pocketed the satanic silver coin. Before this, however, Jack had already shrewdly placed a crucifix in his pocket, which prevented the devil from returning to his original form. Trapped. The devil now had no choice but to agree to a deal to leave Jack and his soul alone for 10 years in exchange for his freedom. After this encounter, Jack continued to drink for the next 10 years until Satan once again appeared before him to uphold his side of the deal. Once again, Jack pleaded with Satan, but this time only for an apple to be eaten as his last meal. Satan, bemused by this desperate and pathetic plea, climbed the nearby apple tree to retrieve an apple for Jack. Once Satan neared the top of the tree, however, Jack quickly carved a crucifix into its trunk, trapping Satan once again. Jack told the devil that he would now only free him if he left his soul alone for all eternity. Again, Satan had no choice but to agree to stingy Jack's terms. Jack continued to drink and eventually drank himself to death. Once in the afterlife, God refused to accept the soul of such an evil and deceptive person into heaven. Jack then tried to enter hell, but Satan refused him, holding up his side of their bargain, which was to leave Jack's soul alone for all eternity. Satan then gave Jack a single piece of hot coal to guide his way through the afterlife. Jack then placed the glowing hot coal inside of a hollowed out turnip and was then doomed to perpetually walk the plains between good and evil alone. The legend of Stingy Jack's faith would spread all across Ireland, with him becoming known as Jack of the Lantern, and eventually just Jack O'Lantern. Being Irish, I think it's amazing to see a celebration that originated in Ireland now being held so widely and enthusiastically all around the world in the same vein as St. Patrick's Day. Yes, it might not be observed in as traditional a manner as it once was, and yes, commercialism may have changed it over the decades, but to me, it's still a very important, meaningful and symbolic holiday, and one that I hope continues on for centuries more. Happy Halloween. Thanks for watching and don't forget to drop a like and remember to subscribe to see more intriguing content like this in the future.